Welcome to this Computer Science 1 video series. In this module, we'll get started with the basics of programming. This module is split into six parts. First, we'll give an introduction to programming, including coding, compiling, and running a basic C program. We'll then focus on basic variable types and their operators. In the third part, we'll cover basic input and output operations. We'll then apply what we've covered and walk you through writing several programs to get you started. We also have two supplemental videos to introduce you to non-interactive input, as well as using a tool called the linter. In this first part, we'll focus on the general steps to writing and compiling a basic program, highlighting the basic elements of a program. A lot goes into modern complex computer systems, software engineering, systems architecture, design, programming, testing, and more. However, at the core of this complexity is the simple computer program. A computer program is simply a collection of instructions that performs a specific task when executed on a computer. A programming language is a formal language that specifies a set of instructions that can be used in a program. High-level programming languages are intended to be somewhat human-readable. They're certainly not English or other natural languages, but they are closer to English than they are to the language that a machine can actually understand. In general, we code our programs in a plain text editor or code editor or a full integrated development environment, or IDE, that can be really helpful in automating a lot of things for us, including compiling, building, running, and debugging a program. A program is not necessarily something that an actual computer can understand and run. Instead, we have to compile a program to machine code that can then be run on a particular operating system. The process of creating a program entails a lot of steps. Our program starts out as source code. For this course, we'll be programming in C. A compiler then takes a high-level programming language and translates it to a lower-level assembly language that is closer to a processor's actual instruction set. An assembler then translates the assembly into machine code, a set of instructions that can be directly run on a processor. The resulting machine code is binary, which is just a sequence of zeros and ones that's really only meaningful to a machine. We'll demonstrate this process in a moment. With respect to C, the process may include a few more steps. We start with editing our source code in some text editor or IDE. The compiler then translates the source code into an object file, which contains assembly and or machine code. However, if there are any errors in our program, the compiler won't understand, so we're forced to go back and fix them until our program compiles with the correct syntax of the language. A linker then may bring in other object files representing libraries or other pieces of functionality, finally creating an executable file that can be run. A user may provide input to the program, which then processes the input and produces a result or output. Let's take a look at a demonstration of the process with a simple Hello World program. Here I've got a source file named Hello World.c in a code editor named Atom.io. Let's go to the command line and try to compile this in several steps. You can see the file here. First, I'm going to assemble it that is, take the high-level programming language and translate it to assembly code using a compiler named GCC. This created a new file, hello world.s. Let's open it up in our code editor. As you can see, it's not plain English, but you can make some of it out. It's certainly lower level than our high-level C code. Now let's actually go ahead and compile it. This creates a new hello world.o file, which is an object file. I can use a utility to identify each type of these files. it's confirmed that it's a bunch of machine code in an object file. If we were to try to look at this in a text editor, it'd be pretty meaningless. It's mostly just a bunch of binary. We can look at the binary using a utility called hex dump. Some of the plain text is preserved, but for the most part, it's just a bunch of machine code that has no human interpretation. The object file itself is not an executable. That is, we can't run it. It actually has to be compiled into a fully executable program first. 
In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do that all in one step. That one command assembles, compiles, links, and produces an executable file all at once. By default, the executable name is a.out. Let's go ahead and run it using the dot slash a.out command. And it prints hello world. Let's take a look at a little bit more substantial program. This program prompts the user to input a number of miles and then converts them to kilometers. Let's identify some of the major elements of this program. At the top, we have what is called a header. This is a multi-line comment that documents who the author was and what the purpose of the program is. We then have several preprocessor directives. The first two bring in or include external libraries. In particular, the standard library, which should always be included, and the standard input-output library. The other preprocessor directive is a macro that defines the term KMS per mile to have a value of 1.60934, the number of kilometers in a mile. This is the main function. Every executable program starts at the main function. Within this main function, we have variable declarations and function calls. We also compute a value and finally print the results out to the user. We'll cover each of these elements in detail, but that's the start of a basic program. Comments are human readable messages embedded in code intended to communicate the functionality and intent of a program to another human. Ultimately, comments are ignored by the compiler and do not affect the resulting program. You can write single comments, which begin with two forward slashes. Everything after these forward slashes to the end of the line is ignored. You can also write multi-line comments that begin with a slash star and end with a star slash. Everything between these two elements is treated as a comment. It is also common to see doc style comments, which are simply just multi-line comments, but formatted with two stars at the beginning and a vertical line of stars to give a clear visual cue that the entire block is a comment. Doc style comments are common in many programming languages because various utilities can be used to generate more user-friendly documentation from them. In general, comments should tell you the what and the why of a program. That is, a comment should tell another human being what the program, function, or snippet of code does at a higher, more abstract level. Comments also can be used to clarify why certain decisions were made or to communicate what the original author intended with their code. Not every line in a program should have a comment. Indeed, code should be self-documenting. In other words, code should be clearly written so that anybody familiar with the language can understand how the code or program works. You should only document the major portions of a program or particularly complicated parts with comments. Preprocessor directives tell the compiler to do certain things before the source code is actually compiled. They always begin with a hash or a pound sign. As we saw, we can use a hash define to define a macro. A macro allows you to define constants like we did with the miles to kilometers program to avoid what are referred to as magic numbers. Magic numbers are numbers whose meaning is not immediately apparent. We may not be able to remember that there are actually 1.609 kilometers in a mile, but if we use a macro named KMS per mile, that can be easily read by a human. It makes our program more readable and understandable. Essentially, the compiler does a cut and replace with macro values. Every instance of the first argument A is replaced with the second argument B. So in our miles to kilometers program, every instance of KMS per mile was replaced with the actual value. Preprocessor directives also allow us to include external libraries, such as the standard library, which should always be included, the standard input-output library, which provides basic I.O. functionality, and another fundamental library is the math library. The main function serves as a main entry point of every program. When a program is executed, the instructions in the main function are executed top to bottom, one after the other. Without a main function, our program would not be executable. Code may still be useful without a main function. That's what libraries are after all, a collection of compiled but not executable code. Other functions included scanf that reads in input and printf which produces output. Useful functions in the math library include square root, sine, and pow. We'll cover functions in depth later on, but obviously we're gonna start using them right away. 
You may have also noticed a lot of special symbols or punctuation in the example programs. These are necessary for the proper syntax of a program so that a compiler can understand the instructions that we're trying to give it. In general, each executable line of code ends with a semicolon. This is similar to English in which we end each sentence with a period. Blocks of code are delimited by opening and closing curly brackets, again similar to paragraphs in English. For example, the code in the main function was enclosed by curly brackets. Parentheses and square brackets are also commonly used for similar purposes but in different contexts that we'll cover later. Commas are used to delimit arguments, such as our variable declarations and arguments passed to the printf function. In general, white space does not affect a program. It is, however, important to making a program readable. Using white space effectively between words and with indentation is essential for good programming style. Finally, you saw many keywords or reserved words, such as int, double, and return. A programming language usually has an extensive collection of these keywords that have a special and very specific meaning in the language. This was only an introductory overview. We'll cover all of these concepts in detail as we go on.